Welcome to National Signing Day 2018. It's actually the second signing day for the first time for football, and BGSU has another great recruiting class we're going to talk about today. First up, we're talking with assistant coach Matt Brock, and he's going to talk about a lot of recruits here in our first go-round. And coach, let's start at the linebacker position. Hassan Belton comes from Columbia, South Carolina, and one of these guys that was able to already be enrolled here at BGSU, and I know that's going to give him an advantage. And most importantly, he'll be able to participate in spring ball. Yeah, you know, he was working out with our guys this morning in the team run. He's a, he's a young man, even though he comes from junior college, uh, carries himself with maturity. And we think because of that, he's going to be able to step in and learn our new system pretty quickly. Uh, he's done a great job in the classroom. Uh, he came in right at, the, right at the deadline and has done a tremendous job of catching up on all the schoolwork, and, and we're excited about him. And usually junior college guys, you expect them to be physically more ready to step right in. Obviously, they only have two years of eligibility left. Uh, so is he that kind of guy? And where do you see him fitting in? Which linebacker position? Yeah, we think he can do multiple things. But with uh, Coach Polini's system, we feel like a will linebacker. He provides us the ability with his, his athleticism to be able to match up in coverage, but yet physical enough. Uh, to fill in inside and play in the box a little bit. So gives us, um, you know, some versatility with it. Another signee, DeAndre Fitzhenley, also a linebacker out of Clearwater, Florida. And he is really young for his class, one of those guys that's been the youngest in his class all along. He'd say he just turned 17? Turned 17 during his season. Wow. Uh, he's a young kid. Uh, he's physical against the run, does a really good job in the box. I think he'll probably play uh, Mike in our system. Um, he's smart, cerebral, and so once he learns the system and, and develops his body the way we want him to, I think he can be a very productive player. Well, I look at uh, six foot two thirty-five, so he's already a, a pretty big, strong young man, isn't he? He is. Yeah, we're, we're going to make sure he continues to, to make that weight the right weight. Um, but he's he's already done that, and we've talked about it, and, and has made strides just since we've started recruiting him through the process. So I've been pleased with him. And we continue with more linebackers. So uh, before we get to that, clearly a position of need. We've got a lot of linebackers in this class, right? Yeah, we, you know, our number was uh, three to four. We ended up taking one more with Coach Polini coming in. So uh, we just, we're still right where we need to be. It was just something that going into this year, uh, from a depth standpoint, we needed to provide a little bit more numbers there. Antoine Johnson comes to Bowling Green from Huber Heights Wayne High School in Dayton, a powerhouse program in the Buckeye State. And I see 231 with this young man as well. You're talking about a size and strength that'll fit right in. Yeah, I think physically uh, he's a guy that we feel like as long as he can, can process and pick it up, he can make an impact for us early, potentially. Um, comes from a great program, understands how to work, understands what it takes to win. And those things for me are, are as important as any physical tool that he can provide for us. So. And nice to be getting players out of programs like that. It yeah, helps build absolutely. the brand of Bowling Green. Absolutely. Southwest Absolutely. Ohio, the powerhouse mm -hmm. Wayne Warriors. Mm -hmm. Brandon Purse comes from Rochester Community College and another mid-year enrollee, mm -hmm. uh, a linebacker coming in, junior college guy. So again, we would figure to see him on the field right away. Talk about Brandon Purse. Yeah, I have high expectations for Brandon. Again, even though he comes from junior college, he's maybe not your typical junior college kid. I mean, he, he's a guy that takes care of all his business on and off the field. Uh, physically, he looks the part. Um, can really move well if you watch his tape. Uh, he, he also provides athleticism. So feel like he can fit in pretty well for us uh, early on and, and get in the mix. And you guys think he could play a number of the linebacker positions? They're not really set on one just yet. No, I think he can be Mike. I think he can uh, possibly play Will for us as well. Um, and then maybe into our nickel and dime packages, do some different things at the Mike uh, position. So. Also, Devin Ruffin Jr. comes from St. Louis, mm -hmm. another linebacker for BGSU. and. I know you mentioned that he played both ways in high school, which is not that uncommon, but it gives guys sometimes an appreciation for both sides of the ball, even though clearly you're bringing him in to play linebacker. Yeah, sometimes uh, when a guy has played on both sides of the ball, the positive is when he actually can focus his attention on one side, then just, you know, he has a huge ceiling because of that. And so he comes from a, a really good program in St. Louis, but it's a smaller school. And so he was just forced from a depth perspective to provide uh, and play tight end for them, you know. So I think that'll help him as he moves into our program. 
Sometimes, too, you can learn about a guy's leadership qualities when they play at a school like that where they have to play both yeah. ways and yeah. they become a team leader almost by default. Well, he had no choice. His, uh, you know, his father, stepfather is the head coach there. At, at Luther North, and so from an early age, you know, I think that was just expected of him. So he's naturally uh, grew up around that, you know. Let's move to a different position, Coach Brock. Caleb Biggers comes from Baltimore, Maryland, a defensive back. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you tell us about Caleb? Yeah, Caleb's a great kid, comes from a great family, great home um, over there, and another good program kid. Uh, comes in smart. He's played on both sides of the ball, played some receiver as well, has the athleticism, and then he also has – uh, the ball skills that I think will, will help us in the back end create takeaways, and, and especially in this new system, I think he'll fit in really well with our safeties. And the final recruit we'll talk about with Coach Brock is a, a punter and a kicker. Cooper Lee comes from DeSoto, Kansas, also a junior college guy. And, mm -hmm. man, have we been spoiled with Joseph Davidson and Cooper <laughs> Lee. I'm sure knows he's got big shoes to fill. But uh, yeah. give us uh, your take on Cooper and his ability. Yeah, Cooper's, uh, you know, he's kind of like Joe in the standpoint of he's, he's an athlete. He's an athlete that plays punter. Obviously, he's not physically the same dimensions. There's not many punters out there in the country that are. Uh, and he knows he has huge shoes to fill, and I think that was part of the reason he was so intrigued with Bowling Green is being able to step in and compete to be that guy to take over for Joe, which is few and far between people that would want that. You know, And, and so I was excited about him. Uh, he's a guy that was highly recruited out of junior college, had multiple opportunities to go different places around the country, uh, was uh, second team or third team All-American and junior college so we're excited about him uh, like you said he's got huge shoes to fill but uh, i think he can he can do that for you us. know uh, brian schmidtabush before <laughs> joseph was a great punter here as well is starting to maybe build a little uh, reputation as guys come here and, and make a name for themselves as a punter <laughs> let's hope so let's hope Absolutely. so i mean that's that's the plan and and it's been a weapon for us and hopefully it'll continue to be a weapon for us cooper lee is the next guy up as the bowling mm -hmm. green punter Welcome back into our coverage of National Signing Day 2018. This is one of our new Falcons, a mid-year enrollee. His name is Bryce Beasley. He's from Southfield, Michigan. He's quarterback. Bryce, welcome to Bowling Green. Thank you. Let's talk about the recruiting process and uh, kind of what led you to come to Bowling Green. Uh, clearly, other schools were also uh, recruiting you. Talk about uh, some of the things that led you to choose Bowling Green. Uh, I just felt like Bowling Green coming in, uh, they gave me a great opportunity to come in and compete. And also just coming in and the uh, uh, academic side and being able to um, pursue my major, sports management. Who was your coach that first contacted you that kind of laid that groundwork for you to come to Bowling Green? And talk about the relationship built there. Uh, coach Brock actually came to my school and visited me. And he, like, he came and just talked to me. And then I came down to a camp. And I loved it from there. Now, you had, you had to graduate early from high school, so you were already thinking about your plan well before it got to your senior year. Was that difficult to get arranged to leave high school early? Uh, no, I actually talked to my dad about it, and so it was always a plan that I wanted to go to school early and get acclimated to my uh, classes before coming in as a freshman and having to deal with football and classes. And your dad was a college football player, so I'm sure he had he had some pointers too, didn't he? Yes. Now, did he uh, try to steer you one way or the other, or did he just kind of leave it up to you? Uh, he actually just he kind of just helped me out and pushed me along the way, but um, mostly it was just up to me, and it was my decision where I wanted to go. Well, now you've been at Bowling Green for a little while now, and uh, talking about the academics, are you getting used to the rigors of that and uh, the the weight training and all that? Is it uh, smoothing out for you? Oh uh, yeah, it's starting to get smooth. Um, first week it was a little tough balancing out the schedule and just uh, managing my time, but it's pretty starting to get pretty easy now. Well, Bryce, we're certainly uh, glad to have you as part of this recruiting class, and we look forward to seeing you in spring football. Welcome to Bowling Green. Thank you. Bryce Beasley, quarterback from Southfield, Michigan, part of the 2018 class for Bowling Green football. We continue our coverage of National Signing Day 2018 here at BGSU. Our new defensive coordinator, Carl Polini, joins us now. Carl, welcome to Bowling Green. Good to be here. Let's talk about Carl Brooks, a defensive end out of Lansing, Michigan, Sexton High School, a very well-known powerhouse program up there. Uh, what about Carl Brooks? What do you like about him physically? Everything. I, um, when I took the job here, we had one more spot left. I watch a lot of tape and, and rank the guys, and, and he was definitely our number one. 
You know, he's got the length and the athleticism to be a factor pass rushing off the edge, but he's certainly physical enough to get in there and play over a tight end and be a dominant force against the run. Um, I mean, the kid's a freak. He, he, uh, uh, he's 235 pounds, runs a second leg on the four by one, and, and um, will probably make the state finals in the high hurdles this year. So um, you don't often see an athlete, an athlete like that available to you so when you do you got to snatch them up and as I said that program up there is well known they've got big-time recruits all the time so to snag one of their guys is, is nice too yeah it's good to get in that school um, develop a relationship with the coach and you know he's been coached and he's serious about football and he's a great kid comes from a good family um, so I mean he's a can't miss guy I think he's gonna have a big impact here <laughs> Coach, speaking of building relationships, it's great to have you here at BGSU. You're new to BG, just about a month into your tenure now as the defensive coordinator. Uh, without getting too buried in the X's and O's, so what are some of the things we might notice a little bit different defense schematic-wise this year? Well, you know, we have our system that you know we've been running for a long time, and it's evolved over the years. Um, but I'm a firm believer in it. It's not what you do. You know, you can. You can have success defending in a 40 front or a 30 front or a five-man front. Doesn't really matter. It's really how you do it. Um, so I think you know our guys are going to have to learn to play with their hands, play with great effort, play intelligently, um, be very disciplined on the field. And I think if you can accomplish those things, uh, it really doesn't matter what scheme you run. So we're going to talk more this spring about the the how you know how to play more than what we're doing essentially. Coach, a quick uh, background with you, some of your past experiences. Uh, most recently, you were at Youngstown State, but uh, for the fans, uh, kind of lay out uh, your career path and what brought you to Bowling Green at this point. Well, I've been all over. I, I started my career at Kansas State under Bill Snyder and Bob Stoops as a graduate assistant. Then I was a head coach at the high school level in Kansas City and in Youngstown, Ohio for seven or eight years, and then went on to the University of Nebraska for a year, and then... Ohio and um, back to Nebraska and I was a defensive coordinator there for seven years um, and then to Florida Atlantic as a head coach and then on to Youngstown State as a defensive coordinator so um, you know been in it a long time <laughs> you know I start to talk about the years that's what makes me feel old but uh, there's not much I haven't seen or had to deal with and hopefully I can bring that experience and add it to uh, Coach Jenks' staff. I'm excited about this opportunity and who he is and, and where we're headed as a football program and I thought it was a perfect fit for me. Well, Coach Carl Pliny isn't one of the recruits, so to speak, but we're certainly glad to have him here at BG as one of the new faces. Coach, thanks for being here and good luck this season. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. We continue with coverage of National Signing Day 2018 here at Bowling Green State University. Time to meet one of our new coaches, Jimmy Williams, comes to us to coach D-Line. Coach, welcome to Bowling Green. Thank you. Glad, glad and excited to be here. Good to have you. Let's uh, take the folks through some of your background. Sure. First of all, you played college football at Nebraska, one of the best-known programs in the country. And uh, give us a little bit of remembrance about being a Cornhusker on the field there in Lincoln. Well, first of all, you know, when you think of Nebraska, when I do, I think of Coach Osborne, just a, a great mentor, person, coach, had a tremendous impact on me, and the, the game itself was, uh, you know, bigger than I had ever experienced as, as a walk-on, and I have tremendous memories about it. Well, no question that history made at Nebraska with Coach Osborne, mm -hmm. and then you went on and got into coaching, and you're, you're another one of these uh, coaches that have been to several different institutions and you've been at different places in the MAC. in mm -hmm. fact three different teams you've coached with have played in the MAC championship game so that that's quite an experience it is you know three three and we won two of them at, at buffalo uh and at, at western and so i'm very comfortable and familiar with the mac and the process from beginning to end uh, as to how to talk about the the last uh, latest stop here at bowling green how it played out that uh, you ended up coming here to coach the d-line well you know first of all i want to thank coach jinks and, and carl uh, for the opportunity and carl's a big played a big part of that because he and i have coached together at nebraska and so uh, i know his uh, his philosophy his style you know, just how he coaches what he wants and and so i thought it was a great fit and a, a great opportunity now as far as coaching the d-line when you 
start to look at some of the things that, that you'll have to do. What, what do you think are some of the most important things that you want to get accomplished with your guys right. coming up in spring ball? Right. Well, I think, first of all, whenever you're talking about D-line, defense in general, you, you've, got to, you've got to start with effort. Uh, playing with great effort and a great attitude. Everything kind of spins off from that, playing fast and physical. And then you want to, you know, graduate to fundamentally being sound and, and consistent in play. So that's kind of the emphasis initially. And a lot of who I am and my experience is pouring it into our guys. And, you know, it's a, it's a blue collar, physical, and, and tough a player. Coach, finally, uh, with your playing background in mm -hmm. Nebraska then playing in the National Football League mm -hmm. with the Lions. Do you feel that's over the years given you a little bit of uh, some credibility with guys when, when you try to coach them up? Well, you know, I think the credibility uh, it, it is inevitably in what you do and does it work. Uh, and so, uh, you know, building a relationship with guys is critical. And the background has its benefits for me as a coach in terms of knowledge. But it's, you know, transferring that into tangible results that they can experience uh, successfully on the field. Coach Jimmy Williams is the new D-line coach here at BGSU. Coach, great to have you with us. Thanks you for being here. Come from small towns, suburbs, or sprawling cities. Come and belong. Take root, and together we will make this space our own. We'll thrive, master our skills, live in the moment. The conversations after class ends, where real relationships begin, connections are made, becoming a part of something bigger, bigger than ourselves. Belong, stand out, go far at Bowling Green State University. We continue our coverage of BGSU's uh, Signing Day 2018. We're joined now by co-offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach Andy Padron. And uh, we're here to talk about a recruit that we already met earlier, Bryce Veasley, big quarterback out of Southfield, Michigan. And Coach Padron, I know that uh, the quarterback position, uh, a lot of things to consider right. for the young man when you're recruiting him. Talk about what first attracted you guys to Bryce Veasley, and then we'll kind of go through the procedure. His, uh, his arm strength. Uh, he spun the ball well. We, we had him out at camp. Um, I want to say his going into his junior year. Uh, and we, we felt like he had, he had the uh, ability to, to wing it around. Uh, I believe he threw for 3,700 yards, 28 touchdowns. So uh, that side of it we knew that he could do. Uh, and then as he got older, we kind of evaluated him as a guy, you know, that could run a little bit, and he was a, he showed on video uh, that he was able to do it. And when you're recruiting a quarterback, I mean, you can watch their recruiting tape and all mm -hmm. of that, but you want to see that guy in person and, and watch him throw, right? Yeah, that, you can't you can't see the ball spin uh, on video uh, from the angles that you know you get, and so camp. That's why the camp's important. Uh, you can see it, and then, of course, live you go, and they're working out, and you're, you're able to see them uh, spin the ball in person, and you can kind of see the velocity. And we, we met Bryce earlier, and his dad was a college football player, and mm -hmm. he seems like he's just really solid as far as he's got a good head on his shoulders, came here early. All this mm -hmm. stuff is stacking up in his favor, right? Yeah, most definitely. Well, the, the important thing is he comes in as our, our third quarterback. Uh, you know, losing two uh, that are going to be transferring out. We were down to two, and then, uh, you know, you add him to the mix, and now it's our third scholarship guy uh, and fourth quarterback on the roster. And so it's important for us to have him here in the spring just for the, the sake of we got to have a guy that's ready to go, and, and we were lucky to have him be able to enroll early because that's important for a quarterback. Jarrett uh, Daigie did it last, last spring. And it, it helped him and it got him in position that he's in now. Uh, and so we're, we're excited to have Bryce in here now. Coach, also Bryce played basketball and baseball in mm -hmm. high school. That give you a better idea, too, of maybe his athleticism and also how he, how he leads a team by being on other teams? Yeah, that, we like multi-sport guys. You know, it shows an athleticism uh, and then their willingness to compete. And uh, he... He's, he's a guy that likes to compete and, and uh, loves to win. And uh, He played basketball early on and stopped playing basketball and just went uh, football and baseball. He's a pitcher. Uh, and, and obviously football, they led him to the state championship for the first time since I believe the school opened in 1955. 
So. Well, if he spins it that well and he's been on the mound, don't let Coach Schmidt see him. <laughs> get some ideas. Coach Andy Padrone, our co-offensive coordinator, with us as we continue with coverage of National Signing Day 2018. We continue with National Signing Day 2018 here at BGSU. We're talking now with receivers coach Seth Dagey, and we've got three receivers to talk about right now. Coach, let's start with Noah Massey, a 6'3 kid out of Houston, Texas. Uh, tell us about Noah Massey and why you guys wanted to bring him to BGSU. Uh, well, you, you talk about big, strong, and fast. Um, I think that's our... That's what we identified as, as what, we, what type of receiver we wanted to go for in this, in this class. Um, you know, Coach Padron, you know, recruits the Houston area, kind of identified him. I went down to see him, and it only took me about four or five routes to know that this guy's uh, the quality of type of player that we want here. Reminds me a lot of Quentin Morris, who started as a true freshman for us. Uh, big, like you said, 6'3", 215, with a frame to probably carry 225. Uh, strong hands, great feet, uh, but just the type of guy you want in your program, too. You talk about you saw them running routes. We hear some receivers are referred to sometimes as route technicians. In other words, they're really precise. And you just mentioned his footwork. Is, is that something that Noah's already got? Yeah, he, and he does a lot of work on his own. Um, obviously, he comes from a big-time program in Texas, Spring Westfield. You know, they're predominantly, you know, always good, always deep runs in the playoffs. So you, Noah, Noah does a good job on his own, you know, perfecting his craft. Um, but it, there was just something, there was a lot of potential there. Um, he kind of chose to me to be a kind of a matchup nightmare um, in this conference, and that's kind of why we went on him. Big, strong, and fast. Those yeah. are three good things to be. Julian Ortega Jones, also from Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, to be precise. Six foot three again, so he's fitting that big mold. What else about Julian? Well, Julian's a natural athlete. Um, comes from a very disciplined, athletic family. Um, all of his brothers play sports. Uh, one plays baseball, run, one runs track. Um, so you just, as, as a competitor, um, he kind of fits the mold that we're looking for. Again, long, um, you talk about natural ball skills. This dude kind of gravitates to the ball and just catches it very naturally. So, and again, again, great feet. Uh, that's one thing that all three of them, that all three guys that we signed have great feet. They have great body control and they have really strong hands, which to me is, is some of that stuff kind of hard to, to, hard to coach. So naturally having it is going to be huge for us. And also that uh, tenacity to go get the football, you, you kind of referred to it there, that'll really set you apart. So to see it for these guys at such a young age before they even get to college, that's got to be a huge attraction yeah, there's too. No, there's no doubt. And like I said, just being natural at it. Um, because I, as coaches, we can, we can motivate, teach, teach the scheme, and help them with some technique stuff. But to be able to just naturally gravitate to the ball and he just kind of plucks it out of the air, is just, I, think it's got, I think it's rare. We talk about another receiver signed by BGSU here for the 2018 class, Onyx Smith from Cibolo, Texas. You'll recall that's where Coach Jinks was at Steele High School. Onyx is 6'2", so again, another guy in that uh, bigger mold. Uh, give us a rundown on Onyx. You know, Onyx is, uh, is, is one of those humble guys, very, 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 um, to me, under-recruited because he's a very gifted athlete and he has really good body control. And again, I go back to the same thing. He has great feet and really strong hands, all three of these guys. And so uh, what we look for in all these three of these guys is we asked ourselves, can they play all four of our positions? And being coachable allow, and, and having great feet and having those natural ball skills, all four of them can play you know, all four positions. But Onyx, um, I think, has a lot of potential. Um, he's very coachable. I'm really excited to, uh, to get him in the room. Well, we're excited about this trio of receivers as well. Receivers coach Seth Dagey with us as we continue with coverage of Bowling Green's National Signing Day. From the moment you set foot on campus at BGSU, you'll know this is a place where you can belong. In fact, BGSU is recognized for our strong commitment to engaging students in their education. And Bowling Green is one of the best college towns in America. This is a place where you can stand out. Come to one of the nation's top public universities and choose a program that fits you. Take advantage of the Falcon Internship Guarantee, the first of its kind in Ohio. With a BGSU degree, you can go far, further than you ever thought possible. Confident in your qualifications and ready like never before to fly. Belong, stand out, go far. 
at Bowling Green State University. Time to talk about some more BGSU recruits here on National Signing Day 2018. With me now is Kevin Kilbert, the co-offensive coordinator for BGSU. We're going to talk about the tight ends signed in this class. And we start with James Lachey out of Grandview Heights in Columbus. And, of course, anybody that follows football in Ohio knows his dad, Jim Lachey, the former All-American and Super Bowl champion. So we get that talked about and we get that out of the way. And, Obviously, some of Dad's ability came down to son, didn't it? Absolutely. James uh, comes from a great uh, fa uh, football background, uh, great family. He's got uh, 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 sisters are all athletes, brothers, great athlete, younger brothers, great athlete. Um, very athletic family. Uh, the thing that we saw that we liked most about James is just uh, his ability to do so many different things. If you watch his highlights, um, he played tight end. He played tight end this year. He played fullback, he played running back, he played quarterback. Uh, he kind of did whatever he had to do to uh, help the team. So uh, he brings a lot of versatility. Um, great athlete, great kid, lucky to have him. And really that also can show you that a guy is willing to do what it takes for the team. Gives him an opportunity to show that part of the absolutely. team. Absolutely, absolutely. So we welcome James Lachey to BGSU. Uh, specifically when he played tight end, what yeah. did you like about it? Um, first, uh, probably his... Uh, pass catching ability that's the first thing that we noticed at uh, camp that's honestly uh, the reason he got uh, offered that day by coach Jinx uh, coach Jinx saw he was 235 240 pounds uh, about 6'3 I don't know what he's listed at there 6'4 six, four, six, yeah 6'3 four and a half whatever um, and he could move good and uh, moved well ran good routes uh, very natural uh, catching the ball um, that's probably the thing that stuck out the most to uh, us and uh, coach Jinx on that Specific camp day. Another tight end signed by the Falcons here for 2018, Presley Motes, a young man that comes from <coughs> Arizona, a, a junior college guy. So, uh, again, we expect most of the time you bring in a Juco, he's probably going to see the field quickly. Tell us about Presley Motes. Yeah, and that's the thing that you'll see with mo a lot of these guys. Uh, we're going to have to, uh, three of them are probably going to, we're going to need all three of them this year. Um, they're all going to see the field early and then. Uh, no doubt with uh, Presley Motes, he's a guy that's going to have to come in and uh, make a huge impact from day one. Um, not your typical junior college uh, uh, athlete. He, uh, he's actually a little bit older. He's uh, 23 years old, uh, went on a mission, came back to school, um, is married. Um, uh, he's, he's a great guy, a uh, great man. He, uh, he started out playing uh, quarterback, uh, high school, played quarterback, played linebacker. Uh, eventually got bigger. Uh, they've moved him to tight end in, uh, in junior college, and uh, he's only played it for a year, year and a half. But uh, I think his upside's tremendous. His uh, his uh, just his size, and then his um, physicality that he brings. You'll watch his highlight. Ton of cracking, uh, cracking people. Uh, he's not afraid to stick his head in there and bring the wood. So now being a quarterback too, at least early in his career. Uh, sometimes will help guys understand what they need to do as a, as a receiver and as a tight end. Have, have you seen that understanding of the game from his standpoint? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as far as uh, probably route running ability, uh, he, he kind of has an idea of where the ball should be going. So uh, I would think that would, uh, that would definitely help you in your uh, running routes and uh, catching the football. Jake Papez comes from Wentzville, Missouri. Uh, his twin brother will also be talking about him later in this class. Jake, six foot five, two hundred thirty pounds. So clearly, got the look of a tight end and a guy Absolutely. that has that size. But what else attracted you to Jake? Yeah, just like you said, first off is uh, his size. Um, it's the kind of the typical, uh, prototypical tight end size that you're looking for. That six five, two hundred forty five pounds. Uh, same thing with him. He's he's heavy. Uh, says I think he was two hundred forty, two hundred forty five pounds last year. Um, but he ran ran well. Um, he could move. Um, he's long. He's got soft hands. I think uh, I think he's going to be a uh, force to be reckoned with in the passing game, uh, just because of his size. I mean, you look at all the um, tight end uh, teams that are having success uh, in the NFL today. A lot of them are throwing them to these tight ends because they're mismatches on on guys. It's big guys that are uh, that can move, and uh, we think Jake can uh, do that. Well, those guys are apparently we're going to see a lot of them right away. The tight end group. And we thank Coach Kilmer for joining us, and we'll have more of Bowling Green's National Signing Day 2018. It's 
It's time to go up front as we continue with 2018 signing day here at BGSU. We're going to talk O-line now with offensive line coach Stephen Hamby. Uh, let's start with Joe Maxwell, coach out of Florence, Alabama, and 6'4", 275. Uh, give us your rundown on Joe Maxwell. Joe Maxwell, I mean, he played left tackle throughout his entire career. Actually has a twin brother on that team that's about two inches shorter than him. They, uh, Baker back and forth during the entire game, so uh, <laughs> he'll bring some comedic uh, relief to the room. But he's a big old boy from uh, Florence. is uh, not too big of a town, but he, uh, you know, he went through spring ball, fall ball, and he's a uh, he's a uh, he's a good asset for us. Moving on, John O'Brien out of Charlotte High School, Charlotte, Michigan, uh, six foot five. So obviously, that's probably part of the attraction there. Yeah, long, lean body. I mean, we're talking. He's. He's definitely sprouted up since we started recruiting him back in uh, 2017, and um, honestly, he's one of the most aggressive players in that area and in that district, and he did a phenomenal job each and every week. So I'm excited to get him in, and um, we'll see how, how we put weight on him. Yeah, when you're looking at old linemen, clearly you got to try and project a lot of times, can we make this guy bigger, and can he still move and all that? It, it's sort of tricky, isn't it? Yeah, we, 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 we tend to like to build on instead of cutting down. So we're going to look for the leaner, uh, faster guy with what we do in our pass sets and, and our run game. So Let's talk so, about uh, Brad Pape, as we talked about his twin brother nice. Jake earlier. Yep. Uh, Brad is on the O-line, six foot six. so there we go again, right? Yeah, and uh, something I talk about with Brad every single time is it's really not, <clears throat> we're always going to see the intangibles of big and size, but the kid on laser, ran a 4940. So there's so much you can do with that with with just the athleticism side of being an offensive lineman being able to move and that's a that's a good get for us. Cameron Stage, 6'4", 295 pound young man out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So he's already kind of got that weight almost at uh, at a collegiate level as a, yep. a high school senior. There's no doubt. I mean, he literally had a little uh, minor setback in the spring ball, you know, messed up his knee a little bit. He comes back and literally comes comes back from it, and this kid eats and sleeps and breathes in football. He's phenomenal. I mean, this kid wants to play football, and he's excited to be here, and he's going to, I truthfully think, him and uh, Joe have a chance at competing in the rotation. Coach, quick look ahead to spring with your group. Uh, how do you feel about the numbers and depth you'll be able to work with this spring on the O-line? we got 11, so I'm excited to see that. Um, we're going to... We're going to be able to get a good rotation going. We're going to focus on building up the youth, and that's what we have. I mean, we got a lot of sophomores, uh, guys that redshirted last year, and the redshirt's off, and here we go. Four new offensive linemen signed by Bowling Green. It all starts up front and with Coach Hamby, and he's got four new guys. And we'll have more of National Signing Day 2018 here at BGSU. Never lost in the crowd. Your unique story, the one and only you. Fully supported, fully believed in. Together we will learn to lead arm in arm. So much in common, so much to share. We will be challenged, but we will overcome. Because it is our turn to shine. Belong, stand out, go far. At Bowling Green State University. We're back for more of BGSU's 2018 recruiting class. Running backs coach Marcus White is with us now. And coach, we've got some guys to talk about with you. We'll start with a running back, Rico Fry, a young man out of Cartersville, Georgia. And I know from some of your earlier comments that you feel this guy is really going to do great things here at BGSU. What about Rico's skill set attracted you guys to him? Uh, I think that Rico is uh, kind of brings everything to the table that you want in the back. Um, we got, to be honest with you, I think we got kind of lucky with him with the uh, early signing period um, because I think that if, you know, he had waited around, he may have had some guys come in on him that he may not have expected in the, you know, in the first place. But, um, but he's a really good back. He got good hands. He can get out in the space, really good open field runner. He can make you miss. He can run you over. I think he has everything uh, that you want in the back, and he brings it to the table. Sounds like the complete package. Good to have Rico Fry. Let's move to the line that you had been coaching, the D-line. <laughs> You're now coaching running yeah, backs, but no doubt. Javon Henderson is a man, a, a young man from Centerville, Ohio, down in the Dayton area. Yeah. What does he bring to the table? Um, Javon's a multi-sport athlete, uh, very sneaky athletic. You know, you might look at him, you might say, eh, 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 but you see him on a basketball court, you see him on a football field. Uh, he's got good size, he's got the ability to carry a little weight without looking like, you know, he doesn't need the weight on him. 
Uh, he's a really good basketball player. He can play inside, outside, three technique, five technique, whatever you need him to do. Um, he's just a very versatile guy up front for us, and I think he'll fit in very, very well. You know, we hear that a lot about multi-sport athletes, but maybe we don't think about it as much for some of the guys that will play on the Alliance, whether it's offense or defense. But that can be a big plus to see a guy play basketball or baseball or other sports to get an idea for how he can move. Yeah, no doubt. I think you get a, a true picture of their overall athleticism and the things that they can do, the way they can bend, uh, they can get caught in different positions. You see them in different, uh, from a different aspect than you do on a football field. You get to see a little bit more of a finesse type uh, deal to them. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been fun watching him practice. I hadn't made it to a game, but uh, I've watched him practice out there. He gets after pretty good. Also, Coach James Harris Jr. is a defensive back coming to Bowling Green out of Pompano Beach, Florida. And uh, what about James Harris attracts you to him, bringing him here? I think the first thing that struck me with James is that he's a very, very smart kid. Uh, he's, very, he's very driven um, just from just his upbringing. Uh, I guess that, I guess, from his dad. Uh, who's also kind of, you know, they're kind of two peas in the pod. But he was very, he's a very, very smart individual when you sit there and you sit down and talk to him. Not to mention, I mean, he can go get the ball. Uh, he had a lot of interceptions in South Florida. They didn't play against any rinky-dink competition. They're always playing against really good competition, and uh, he does it on the big stage down there. And I think he'll bring that same mentality to BG. And that, that DB spot, that ability to, to find that football is really what yeah. can set guys apart. Oh yeah, that was uh, our uh, old safety coach. That was his. That was his big deal. Is I need somebody with great ball skills who can go get the ball, and uh, James is definitely one of those guys who can do that. Well, it's been great to have him here at BGSU, and good to talk with you, Coach White. Yes, sir. Thanks, Thanks for having for being me. with us, and we'll have more of BGSU's National Signing Day 2018. Time to meet one of our recruits for this 2018 class. Brandon Purse comes to us uh, from West Allis, Wisconsin at Rochester Community College there in Minnesota. And Brandon, I want to ask you about, first of all, what attracted you to Bowling Green? Why did you want to come here when it was all said and done? Um, my relationship with uh, Coach Brock, the linebacker coach, and Coach Jinks, who was recruiting me. Um, we just had a really good relationship from the start. And uh, compared to the other schools that was recruiting me, so um, once I came here on my visit, I already had in mind that I wanted to commit. So once I got here and saw everything, it was already said and done. What about the academic side? What are you uh, going to major in here at BGSU? Um, I'm majoring in psychology right now. So um, I just decided that right before I got here. So it's all new for me, but I'm enjoying it so far. And nice to be able to be a, a mid-year enrollee so you can kind of get that schoolwork under your belt before football begins in the spring, right? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely... Uh, I'm um, an advantage compared to the guys that come in the fall too and just getting comfortable before it's uh, actual season time. What about uh, going through the junior college route? I think you know sometimes uh, people think that it's a lot different being recruited since you're not coming right out of high school. How was your junior college experience and how did you like being recruited from um, that venue? It was different because uh, I started out at Dodge City Community College in Kansas, okay. my first semester of college, and then I transferred there and went to Rochester, Minnesota, which was a lot different than the competition in Kansas. So um, getting recruited, I never got recruited in high school I, by big schools or anything like that. So being recruited in junior college was the first time ever for me, and it was a great experience, something that I enjoyed. But uh, yeah, it was a good time. Were you always a linebacker in high school, or was that a position change too? Um, that was a position change. I weighed 120 pounds basically up until my junior and senior year of high school. So I wasn't good at football. I would get my butt kicked every time. So I played some running back and some slot wide receiver, and then I went to outside linebacker my junior year. And then senior year, moved up to middle linebacker, and um, that's when I really <clears throat> had my breakout year, and that's when I decided to go the junior college route. And, uh, yeah, I just stuck with that position. It well, worked out. He's not buck 20 anymore, more like 220. <laughs> uh, and you figure you're going to step right in here and see some playing time this year, right? Yeah. What are your expectations? My expectations are just to work hard and get to game day and just play as much as I can. I want to win games, and I just want to show that I deserve to be here. Oh, it's great to have you here, Brandon. Brandon Purse, part of this 2018 recruiting class for BGSU. You're going to see some of him and the rest of these guys and some highlights coming up next. And then Coach Jakes is going to have a press conference, so stay tuned right here. From the moment you set foot on campus at BGSU, you'll know this is a place where you can belong. 
fact, BGSU is recognized for our strong commitment to engaging students in their education. And Bowling Green is one of the best college towns in America. This is a place where you can stand out. Come to one of the nation's top public universities and choose a program that fits you. Take advantage of the Falcon Internship Guarantee, the first of its kind in Ohio. With a BGSU degree, you can go far, further than you ever thought possible. Confident in your qualifications and ready like never before to fly. Belong, stand out, go far at Bowling Green State University. Caleb Biggers, Safety, Calvert Hall High School, Baltimore, Maryland. Carl Brooks, defensive lineman, Sexton High School, Lansing, Michigan. DeAndre Fitzhenley, linebacker, Clearwater Central Catholic, Clearwater, Florida. Rico Fry, running back, Cartersville High School, Cartersville, Georgia.
James Harris Jr. Safety, Blanche Ely High School, Pompano Beach, Florida. Von Henderson, defensive line, Centerville High School, Centerville, Ohio. Antoine Johnson, linebacker, Huber Heights Wayne High School, Dayton, Ohio. James Lachey, tight end, Grandview Heights High School, Columbus, Ohio. Cooper Lee, putter and kicker, Coffeyville Community College, DeSoto, Kansas. Massey, wide receiver, Westfield High School, Houston, Texas.
Joe Maxwell Offensive Line, Florence High School, Florence, Alabama. Presley Motes, Eastern Arizona College, Thatcher, Arizona. John O'Brien, offensive lineman, Charlotte High School, Charlotte, Michigan. From the moment you set foot on campus at BGSU, you'll know this is a place where you can belong. In fact, BGSU is recognized for our strong commitment to engaging students in their education. And Bowling Green is one of the best college towns in America. This is a place where you can stand out. Come to one of the nation's top public universities and choose a program that fits you. Take advantage of the Falcon Internship Guarantee, the first of its kind in Ohio. With a BGSU degree, you can go far, further than you ever thought possible. Confident in your qualifications and ready like never before to fly. Belong, stand out, go far at Bowling Green State University.
From the moment you set foot on campus at BGSU, you'll know this is a place where you can belong. In fact, BGSU is recognized for our strong commitment to engaging students in their education. And Bowling Green is one of the best college towns in America. This is a place where you can stand out. Come to one of the nation's top public universities and choose a program that fits you. Take advantage of the Falcon Internship Guarantee, the first of its kind in Ohio. With a BGSU degree, you can go far, further than you ever thought possible. Confident in your qualifications and ready like never before to fly. Belong, stand out, go far at Bowling Green State University. Come. From small towns, suburbs, or sprawling cities, come and belong. Take root. 
and together we will make this space our own. We'll thrive, master our skills, live in the moment. The conversations after class ends, where real relationships begin, connections are made, becoming a part of something bigger, bigger than ourselves. Belong, stand out, go far at Bowling Green State University. Let me put this on here so I don't forget anybody, man. Oh. No, we're good. Yeah, I can look down there. I just want to make sure that I don't omit any. Uh... Yeah. Ready? Coach James. Yeah, good afternoon. I want to thank everybody for coming out to uh, a signing day 2018 uh, 2.0, according to John Wagner. But uh, I, again, I'm um, um, excited about the, the small group that we we're able to, to get in in the second signing period. Um, you know, we were able to uh, bring in a, a few guys that uh, will, will definitely have the opportunity to compete, uh, you know, early in their career. Um, one of them in a, at a position of need by the name of uh, Presley Moats, tight end, coming in from junior college. 
Um, you know, he, he's a kid that, that's, that's been on a mission, kind of a grown man, 23 years old, and he brings a lot of leadership. And, and uh, um, you know, we can't wait to get him, get him, get him out here and get him with us. Um, the other two kids uh, right now are high school kids. Um, Carl Brooks from Michigan. Um, you know, we told you we were going to go big game hunting. And, and what we meant by that, we're, we're bringing in guys that had the opportunity to contribute right now from a physical standpoint. Uh, this is a 6'4", 250-pound kid that can run sub-15 in the 110s. Doesn't come around too often. So coach did a great job of, uh, uh, of getting Carl in the boat. Uh, and and the, the second one is, is uh, Cameron Stage. Cameron Stage, uh, big offensive lineman, played guard or tackle. Again, very skilled young man. Uh, you know, had a ton of offers um, late in his junior year, and we were able to, to get him up here to Bowling Green. Um, still got some unfinished business left to do today. Uh, you know, we, we've got until midnight tonight, if, uh, if, I, if, I, if I understand the rules correctly. But uh, with that, um, I'll take any questions. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. Definitely. I mean, what we wanted to do, we took we took a look at uh, at our as our, as our at our class as a whole, and I uh, wanted to you know to see, you know, what our needs might be. And when I mean by our needs, I mean our immediate needs in, in 18, even the 19 season. Um, and you know, the one that uh, kind of stuck out the most was that tight end position. You know, we feel great about Jake and James. You know, they they're, they're going to be they're they're both just. You know, high character kids, great athletes, and, and will be tremendous for Bowling Green State University. But at the same time, they're 18 years old. You know, and and from a skill standpoint, it, it, it's it's uh, a little bit easier for those guys to come in and make a difference at, at a young age. But we wanted to bring in a, an, an older uh, tight end, and we were able to um, solidify that spot. Uh, and then with the other two spots, uh, you know, we just we just kind of felt like there were a few high school kids out there that, for whatever reason, had gotten lost in the shuffle. Uh, you know, things got crazy with this early signing period. We wanted to, to put our best foot forward and, 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 you know, we put all our efforts in, into those kids and really recruited them hard and we were fortunate to get them here. With Moats in particular, is that you had mentioned you weren't just going to be about right. and fill that position just to fill it. Correct. No, no, he, he's a he's a physical kid. Uh, he's just an impressive man. He, I mean, from the second that he walks into this facility, he's going to make a difference both on and off the football field. How was this year's January different than, than years past with that early signing period? This year's January, yeah. um, I, you know, it was a lot. I'm going to say a lot less stressful. Um, in that uh, you kind of knew what you had, and, and we were really only after four guys. I mean, when you're out there and you've got a class of 24, 25 to fill, and you really have no which, don't know which way these guys are going to know, uh, it can make for a ton of sleepless nights, you know. And we were able to put a lot of more time and energy into to solidifying those, these, these final three, four spots, what have you. Um, but the thing that I enjoyed the most was the opportunity to get out and get amongst those high school coaches. Um, you know, and the thing, you know, we joked about it uh, with, with Bob Mooseberg, our AD. I said, you look, man, we're going to save money. I'm not taking a flight uh, this whole time. We're going to hit, we're going to hit the area. We're going to hit state of Ohio. We're going to hit Michigan. We're going to hit within a three hour uh, driving radius. And we were able to do that. I mean, uh, spend a day in Cleveland, spend a day in Columbus, a day in, a day in Indiana, you know, and just really got to as, as many high schools as I possibly could. And uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, a day in Toledo. You know, uh, I really enjoyed it, and I think the high school coaches did as well. Well, um, really, it's balanced. You know, I think that what you always try to do, or what we look to do in this class, we wanted to be sure that we brought in some tackle bodies up front from offensive, of offensive line standpoint. We felt like we uh, uh, addressed the defensive line and our, and our general lack of size up front in last year's. Um, class and this year was just kind of filling those pieces man and we talk about building this roster kind of the right way um, one of the things that, that I'm really most impressed with is moving forward you'll see those these signing days you know tend to stagger a little bit I think next year our number 17 uh, that we'll be working on and that that's when you yeah, that's when you start to feel good as an old ball coach because uh, you're not losing those kids. Uh, you know, retention's the issue, right? You're not losing those kids because of grades, because of getting in trouble. You're starting to lay the foundation of a, of a, of a real, a true football program.
Well, it's been tough. I mean, it, it's, it's not easy, I, I guarantee you that. And, you know, my hat's off to our coaching staff because really they're in front of those young men and their parents more so than I am. You know, when, when, when I get them here, uh, you know, their foot's halfway in. You know, it's my, my job to get them to jump all the way in. So, again, my hat's off to our coaching staff. They've done a, good, a great job of just building those relationships and, 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 and painting a, and helping those kids see, see our vision. And really, to be honest with you, when you look at the numbers and you look at the opportunity here, because it's about relationships and it's about a fit. And, and um, you know, when, when you, you go out and you say, look, here's where we are, here's where our depth chart is. We played 14 of these guys last year, and we're still a year behind. A year off where we want to be, so that that wasn't a that part in itself wasn't a very difficult sell. Well, Carl was involved with uh, um, Carl Brooks's uh, um, recruitment, and uh, it, it's just been great over the last couple of weeks. Just uh, as we get ready for spring football, as we're starting uh, our installations this morning, actually. Uh, with, with our uh, student athletes, and it's just been great to, to, to just to, to bounce ideas off off a guy that's been in my shoes. So uh, I've enjoyed that. I've appreciated that. Uh, um, he, he's got a uh, you know instant credibility. You know, from the time he gets he's gotten in front of that defensive room, you can tell I, all eyes and all hearts were on him. Um, you know, uh, he's very analytical. Uh, he, he he definitely takes his time and and and. Uh, make sure that that, that uh, he's very thorough in his approach. Um, you know, we've also got um, Jimmy Williams on staff as well. And my goodness, is he an impressive man. Um, got an opportunity to, 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 to really get to know him and get to know his story uh, a little bit better over the last couple of weeks. And uh, you talk about, I mean, because you look at it, you look at the resume, this, that, and the other, and you just look at what the guys accomplished. Then you get to know him a little bit, and you sit down with him, and you kind of realize where he, come from, where he came from and what he's all about. Uh, uh, you know, he's talking about a walk-on in Nebraska, you know, a kid that's from the inner city. Uh, got a chance to spend a, and I didn't know it until I did a home visit with him. You know, he's talking to the parents. I'm like, oh my goodness, you know, but uh, he, he, he's going to have an unbelievable impact on, on, on our football program. Guys, he's going to have an unbelievable impact on our community. Both those guys are. Um, we're lucky to have him, and uh, just, again, I can't wait to continue to work with him. Well, um, we've, uh, we've got two spots left to fill. Uh, what I'll tell you is, is, is one spot, uh, um, you know, we, we've got a guy that we, we've kind of made an offer to. We've got to let this thing, um, you know, it's got to play its course. There's, there's a human resource piece that has to uh, run its course. So uh, uh, let's not jinx anything at this moment and when, when when everything's uh, as it should be, I'll let you guys know. Second one, we're gonna, yeah, we still gotta wait. We gotta go through that process still. Thank you guys. If you, if you wait like five minutes.